It is 9.54 a.m. and it had two trades with TXTM. Unlike the previous days, this was the gap up day, so it was a little more risky for me to consider a morning spike because it's already on a gap up. But I did trade this thing twice and um, they were basically the same setup. The idea was is that I had a gap up and then it trades in the consolidation range and then maybe ideally it can try to break the range that it's trying to break past and then that could be a potential um morning spike setup whether maybe there's a lot of people at the bid or an important level um got broken out i did have my first trade at 936 and i think the only thing is that maybe i should have traded more size because when i had this first trade at 936 i said okay what's the worst case scenario i think the worst case scenario is that we break the day low and then it starts to um, have a huge panic, you know, first red panic on this crazy uptrend and I'm out at freaking um, one penny, which would be according to this trade right here, if I were to have been in at 14, because even though the range, the top here is 135, I was thinking that 14 was a more important level. So I always had my limit there. And with that in mind, I did trade according to a $20 risk level but probably at the time that I had a second trade maybe I could have raised my um, worst case scenario you know um, exit price point and then maybe adjust size so I could have more shares but at 936 I have 5,000 shares at 133 that was right here at some um, 936 and why was I interested in it Again, it looked like it was trying to break this 135 level, and then ideally we'll see how it does at 14. And it was starting the downtrend, right? Right here, but then it looked like a bit of a bull flag. Um, this entire thing looks like a bull flag now, but right here it looks like it was a smaller one. And I really liked it how VWAP was right here at 13, and I thought that could be a good risk level because it doesn't really tend to break under VWAP unless it's maybe a you know a change in momentum so i was in it right here and when it downtrended there was like a humongous bidder with five million shares i think showed up at 132 and i thought that was really convincing like this could be the actual time that is going to break past 135 and then make a move to the 14s and then we'll see how it goes from there so again i was in it for that reason and I did get out two minutes later at 132, which was at 938. Why? As you can tell, there's a lot of volume here. It was just a lot of really bad price action. It wasn't like little tiny red prints. They were very considerable in size and it was wiping out all the support that was in the 13s. And it looked like it was going to break below VWAP because um, I believe VWAP just got slightly higher to 131 or something like that. It says 132, but sometimes VWAP changes when you refresh the chart. And it looks like it was going to, you know, potentially look really bad. And I got out at 132, right there again at 938. So I I don't know how much I lost. It must have been such a tiny amount of money. Because I was in it right here at 133. And I got out at 132, just one little tick. And it did downtrend more and did get under VWAP and get to the 120s. And then it came back above. The 13 level which looked really nice and then I did consider long again I bought 5,000 shares at 139 and that was at 946 so right around here when we had this move towards the upside and then it was starting to consolidate above this breakout level or this previous resistance level at 135 so then at 946 I was in it um, once again at 139 once we even broke the day high officially so i thought this could be it this could be the move towards the upside that i was trying to be a part of way back here when it looked like it was going to do it and that's why i had that 5,000 shares at 139 and i did do the right thing this time <laughs> it took um two days of this similar pattern of trying to trade that morning spike um you know the breakout range either from the previous day or in this case um the high that it made this day on its own because it was on a gap up and um, I sold half of my position at 947 when it was up trending and I sold half at 145 so I sold right here half of my position it looks like it might even be trying to get to 15 that's cool I guess I'll be watching that but 
I did not mean to do that. Right here. At 145, I sold half of my position. And then I sold the other half once we were breaking this trend line that I drew. From here to here, I didn't include the wick. And um, yeah, that's why I got out of that last piece at 949. Right here, this red candle. I got out at 145 because it broke the trend line. And that's good because, you know, it would have been pretty lame if I sold way down here at 135. Because I decided not to trade using, you know, a trend line. I just decided to hold for no entire reason other than just being hard-headed, I guess. But I'll be watching TXTM to see if it can make a move. Maybe a follow-up breakout above 15, although it's probably more sketchy. That's all I have for right now. It is 10.15 a.m. and TXTM is not really looking so good. It looks almost like um, head and shoulders, the shoulder, the head. And now this could be the shoulder right here. I'm going to see if it can hold 135. And then maybe it can try to reverse and do higher lows. And then that can be a eventual setup if it wants to break and get in the 15s later. Otherwise, this thing could potentially panic and break under VWAP. And I'll be honest, I feel a little bit iffy considering, um, you know, like a panic trade or a, a, like a dip buy off of this level right here breaking under because uh i mean it's just up so much and it hasn't really had much of a downtrend for it to you know um kind of i guess make the momentum more justified so i will be looking at this it's just a bit iffy right now and i'll make an update later all right it is 12 14 p.m and i want to make an update there were two setups that i didn't take with txtm Actually three, but one of them I don't mind missing out on, and that was that dip. I was looking at the head and shoulder, shoulder, head, shoulder, and it did break VWAP. It did get as low as the uh, 120s, but it actually held itself, and I was kind of worried that, you know, this might be like the first, you know, really ugly uh, candle on the daily chart, and it might downtrend some more, but it did hold itself, and it did uptrend, and I don't mind missing it too much, but it was a pretty cool move, maybe from the 132s. And then it did get as high as the 14. So that wasn't horrible. That was like, what, 8%? Around 8%. And this is the one that I do regret. Although, I mean, I didn't think it was going to be this impressive. I drew these lines later, but you can essentially call this a symmetrical triangle. How it's up training here, it's down training. And then it broke the top part of the triangle. And that really show that it made a really nice move towards the upside maybe it'll even try to hit 17 now so let me go ahead and remove these two and i'll probably uh remove i guess i'll remove all of them since that one isn't really as relevant anymore and i was watching it right here you know it was consolidating for a very long time at vwap but then i thought okay it looks like it's trying to make a move and get the 14 but you know, there's going to be resistance right here at the 143s, and there's probably going to be more resistance right here in the 14.8s. I didn't think it could uptrend that much. I thought maybe um, it could break 14, maybe get to like 14.2 and then downtrend some more. And, you know, maybe it can do something later, but I just didn't think it really had the momentum. And I think I was right for the most part, but as you can see, this thing had a crazy amount of just pure buying price action just a whole lot of volume here almost like a short seller was getting liquidated and they just had to exit their positions by just straight buying it up and all of that buying pressure was enough for it to break all of the resistance from these two levels here and then it made it move to 15 and then it kind of came back i stopped looking at it although i did get the 16 later this could have been the second ideal setup the first one would have been that break once it was getting out of this line right here at this 139 level in the 14. And then the second setup would have been where it had the uptrend from the 14s to the 16s. And then, then it drops to 15, which was like um, a confirmation, like a confirmation breakout where it kind of breaks past 15, gets to 16. And then it drops back to the original breakout level over the previous um, high. And then it holds that. And then that was a setup that brought it up to almost 17 so there were two setups once again that break out above um, 14 and then this dip right here um, I kind of regret missing um, both of them this one much more because I was watching it when that one was happening and I was surprised by how strong it uptrended but it makes sense because it was a whole lot of volume I do wish that I was a part of it again in this one as well 
and um, ideally in the future I can be able to trade something like this and be more profitable this thing reminds me a lot like um, SYXX and let me see if I can try to get the move um, that it had here it's kind of hard to tell but it did have an uptrend from this sub penny uh, 69 level and then it got as high as a penny so this one was pretty impressive and I did not trade this one that well and I think I'm trading TXTM in comparison much better than that run up with SYXX so I think that's a good um, improvement overall and I see where I can do a bunch of things better but yeah these were some two impressive setups that I could have been a part of I don't see anything that I would want to do with this it could try to break 17 but at this point um, I just don't really want to trade it. It's midday. It's not, you know, um, it's not as ideal as it was previously. It's up on a gap up. I do have to remember that this thing has been up on a gap up. So it makes all the setups that I'm interested in just a little more risky. I'll make an update later as to TXTM does, um, as to what TXTM does, I mean. And yeah, I probably won't trade anything else unless I see something that I just absolutely have to trade. All right, it is 8.46 p.m. and I'm here to call it off. Overall, I'm going to be up on a day $2.50, and so that was um, losing $0.50 cents with the first trade in the morning when it looked like it was trying to do that breakout, and then that second trade was profitable with my best sell at this 14.5 level. So that was pretty good for what that was. I don't want to make it a repeat of what the last recording was. I just should have been able to have taken the setup, the breakout here, and the, the dip buy as well right here. These might have been a little too sketchy for me to trade. I don't know how it was trading back then, but this did offer a move too, which is nice. GESI continues to uptrend. It got as high as $10, and now it looks like it's actually kind of bad seeing the last 15 minutes. But um, yeah, uh, this is going to be a potential morning panic bounce play. It even had its third green day. TXTM could be a potential morning panic bounce play, and I'll feel much safer trading it on a morning panic not like a random panic later in the day and SYXX hasn't really offered any opportunity to bounce or reverse so that hasn't been something I've been trading and nothing with GTUR that's really about it uh, I, again I wish I had those two trades with TXTM but at least I was on the right track I think I just have to um, keep trying and I'm definitely doing better than how I was last time with a similar run up with SYXX, but I still have a lot of things that I need to get better at.